Hello, everybody. I'm Adam Williams, AOPA's Manager of Airport Policy, and I'm joined today by Chris Cooper, AOPA's Director of Regulatory Affairs. And uh, we wanted to um, share some information um, as, as kind of a, a practical guide to a typical flight under these very unusual circumstances. So we want to take you through a typical flight. Let's say you're flying from one airport to another. And what are the things you need to consider uh, as part of your planning in this in this different environment with, with different kinds of restrictions and different levels of ATC availability? Um, so starting with the very beginning of a typical flight, your pre-flight planning. Um, there are some airport considerations that you need to keep in mind. And for anything, everything we're about to tell you during this presentation, please remember, AOPA cannot provide legal advice or legal opinions on state restrictions, uh, but AOPA members are encouraged to contact the AOPA Pilot Information Center at 1-800-USA-AOPA for names of AOPA Legal Services Plan panel attorneys licensed to practice in your state. And also, additional airport information can be found by contacting your State Department of Aviation and your FAA Regional Airport District Office. Before your flight, let's say you're at the beginning of your pre-flight planning process. Uh, these days, uh, we need to keep some special considerations in mind for airports. And we've seen a number of different kinds of airport restrictions. Uh, some airports have completely closed. Some airports require prior permission before landing. And some airports have limited services. So a great place to start before you do anything else is to check AOPA's state-by-state -state guide to COVID-19 restrictions. This is a guide that AOPA regional managers put together, posted last week on AOPA.org. In fact, uh, you can get there by, by into your browser typing pic.aopa.org, and you'll see a link to the the state-by-state the, the -state guide at the very top. And we actually have entries for every state. And we've gone and answered, tried to answer some of the, the, the most common questions that we've been hearing from pilots. We have links to uh, different state orders and we have contact information. Uh, so you know exactly who to, who to get in touch with if you're curious about any policy, uh, any, any, any type of restriction on general aviation, uh, in your state, because sometimes it does depend on the reason you're flying, not just not just where you are, but the reason you're flying. So the first thing you should do is go check AOPA's state-by-state -state guide to COVID uh, restrictions. The next thing you should do is check all the NOTAMs. Uh, we know you probably do this anyway, uh, but it's even more important now, I think, because um, of the of the special nature of of certain certain airports right now. Um, like I said, some airports have limited services, some require prior permission before landing, and uh, some are closed completely. And you're not gonna know unless you check the NOTAMs. In addition to checking the, the NOTAMs, uh, we recommend uh, as an extra measure to contact the airport staff at the departure and destination airports. Um, and that means talking to the actual, the management staff of the airport. Maybe it's the manager, maybe it's the operations manager of the airport. An authoritative source who can tell you exactly what the status of, of that airport is. Uh, and now you can, you can try to get that same information from an FBO or some other business on the airport. But you have to remember, uh, that may not be correct. Um, you, you really want to try to get it from the authoritative source, and that would be the, uh, the, the management of that particular airport. And uh, finally, um, consider reviewing the new SFAR, Special Federal Aviation Regulation. Uh, Chris is going to talk about that in a, in a couple of minutes here. Um, and uh, that, that also may have an impact on your, on your pre-flight planning. Now on air traffic control considerations, uh, as part of your pre-flight planning, um, keep in mind that because overall air, the overall volume of air traffic is down, 
and we have social distancing guidelines from the CDC, uh, the FAA has responded by reducing the operational hours at many ATC facilities. And some, about approximately 100 towers, are actually um, impacted by this, and some are closed. Um, however, the flight service station um, will remain open, and, and generally, um, in route services will be available. But um, just just to uh, help illustrate uh, why the FAA went and 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 and, and changed the operational hours, some some towered airports have seen a 90% reduction in traffic. And IFR traffic generally uh, has been down by a large percentage from normal. So uh, the FAA is able to, to do some social distancing inside the ATC facilities and keep everybody safe while still servicing most flights. Uh, and we expect that to remain the case uh, through, well, uh, indefinitely. So um, now I'd like to go ahead and, and turn it over to Chris Cooper, who's going to talk about the SBAR. All right. Uh, thanks, Adam. Appreciate that. And uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for, um, uh, for listening in on the uh, recording on things that you can take from a practical standpoint as if you were going to go on a flight. Um, Adam's already talked a little bit about certainly the um, airport considerations. We have that great resource there online for you to use um, in addition to some of the air traffic control impacts that we've seen to date. As most of you know and have heard, right, that most recently um, the FAA has released um, its special FAR, SFAR, um, out uh, that um, encompasses a lot of different things, uh, not only for general aviation, but also uh, part um, uh, one, uh, 141 issues, part 21 issues, 63, 65 as well too. We'll briefly touch on those uh, towards the end on that. Um, but to give you a little background of the things that we've been doing, um, AOPA along with other industry groups um, in terms of uh, bringing this, helping the FAA bring this as far uh, to fruition is that um, back in March, uh, as most of you know, early March, mid-March is when really a lot of the country was really coming to grasp with the uh, magnitude of what uh, COVID-19 pandemic was doing to uh, society and here in the United States and all over the world. And with that, with a lot of this social distancing um, impacts that we have uh, seen um, and has uh, impacted again, uh, not only us as a society, but also aviation in general, is that AOPA and other groups saw that, hey, this is going to probably impact uh, a lot of our day-to-day -day operations, not only from the 121 air carrier side, but certainly um, you, part of the general aviation industry. So again, back in March 2020, uh, AOPA, along with a handful of other groups, MBAA, EAA, um, wrote a letter to uh, Administrator Dixon, essentially saying, hey, we know that this is going to be a problem for you, uh, the flying public, to be able to get access to uh, flight instructors, access to maybe a safety pilot, access to the airport and airspace. And so we were proactive to request to the FAA, hey, we need some relief, we need some help. So the FAA has been very helpful in the sense that they have uh, been supportive of this idea of finding ways to again, give relief to the general aviation public. It started out with a lot of 121, 135 deviations, exceptions, but we were able to move along um, now to just a few days ago, um, the end of April, uh, with the development of this SFAR. It is a large document, over 94 pages, at least in the um, pu um, public inspection document. Um, so it's pretty lengthy. And again, this just doesn't impact uh, certain uh, issues and important issues to you, but also many other issues in the roadcraft industry and the flight training industry as well too. So it has a lot of different things in this. And the big thing of uh, that the FAA really, uh, when you read this entire SFAR, um, the main rationale, right, of what they're looking at, why they're writing this is the regulatory relief provided in this SFAR will enable the continuity of aviation operations that are critical during the COVID-19 outbreak, including operations that support essential services and flights that support response efforts. And that's something important to keep in context of as we go through this presentation from a practical standpoint of when we look at what the FAA was looking at with this in mind, um, taking into the kinds of extensions and relief that was provided. And because of the uh, aspect of how important this was 
The FAA was able to make this as a direct final rule. So what that means is that there's no comment period. We take it um, straight to the public. Um, and I should say, rephrase that, is that um, they were able to find this as it being an emergency type of situation. And any delay would essentially provide more harm than good. So we, the FAA was able to find this uh, to where no comment period was necessary. And also a 30 day delay was not necessary. So pretty much on um, when it's published, it becomes effective right away. So again, to bring you the pilot um, population immediate relief on this. So with that, uh, before we dive into things that are in it, things that impact you, let's just briefly talk about what's not in it, because um, we know that there are certain things that we did, AOPA and other industry groups asked for that are not in this. Um, first and uh, foremost, maintenance relief. Uh, if you look through this as far, you're going to see there's no uh, relief for 100 hour inspections, annuals, any other ADs. Um, and that's something we notice and that's something we push for. Unfortunately, it's not in this as far at this time. We are looking at not only that, but other issues that we found that were not at it. We will continue to look at that and find ways to work with the FAA to try and get relief to all of you. Another issue is landing currency. We will talk about a little bit later that instrument currency was addressed in this, but PIC recency in terms of landing was not addressed in this. Uh, flight instructor endorsements, um, practical examinations, um, but we will talk about knowledge exams. And then a lot of these extensions um, have, are pretty much written out to the end of June of this year. Um, we aren't sure exactly what may happen in terms of the pandemic after that time. We don't know what happens if more uh, social distancing and state restrictions occur. Uh, post June 30. So we're not 100% sure what the lever will be um, when we get close to that date, but we'll be sure to keep uh, you up to date on how we are going to be working with the FAA to provide relief. So let's talk about, again, from that practical standpoint, you want to go fly today. Will this SFAR help you? Well, we're going to first talk about a few things on uh, you as pilot, what do you have on you that you should consider, what's in your logbook on what you should also look at, and then a few other considerations as well, too. So first off, let's ask some questions. Are you flying today? First, ask yourself, are you current? So what, whether it's flight review, uh, landing currency, um, if you're taking passengers, uh, you're looking at instrument currency, whatever it might be for your particular type of operations, are you current through June 2020? If so, this as far doesn't have to apply to you. You can continue operating um, within uh, the bounds of uh, Part 6191, what, whatever rules apply to you for your operation. Uh, this office bar does not have to apply to you, and that's okay. So the next question is, do you have access to an aircraft or instructor? Um, because we know, and that is one thing that Adam had brought up along with our state-by-state -state, uh, document, but something that you as an individual really need to take in consideration depending on what state you're in, um, and also your own personal uh, con um, health considerations and concerns. Um, but why we bring that up, right, is that uh, to you, right, that may not make an aircraft accessible. So that's something important to keep in mind is um, are you even going to have access to an aircraft or an instructor? Because again, state by state restrictions may not even allow that. So you've answered these questions. Um, so the next one is if you don't have access to, if, if you're not going to be current through June 2020, if you don't have access, maybe because again, state uh, restrictions. So then is your flight review certificate, whatever it might be, is it going to or has expired between March and June of this year? OK, and then also ask yourself, well, what's also the purpose of your flight? Recreational for commercial purposes? Are you trying to do essential services or something for your business? And that'll be something important to answer as we go farther in this presentation. So let's answer that first, uh, the, the checklist, if you will, in terms of from a practical standpoint. What's in your back pocket, your, you know, your wallet, your purse? Where do you keep your pilot certificate? Let's ask, let's look at those first. So your medical, right? A lot of you have voiced concerns about your medical expiring. As you know, um, about a month ago, the FAA came out with a non-enforcement policy that was great, but we also saw how that was a big concern for a lot of you for insurance purposes, right? Um, and so we heard you loud and clear. We made sure we made that known to the FAA. And so with that, the FAA has been able to give a blanket extension. Um, if you have first, second or third class medical, um, that expire between March and May, uh, that will automatically be extended through uh, the end of June. Okay, so that's going to be really good for those of you with insurance concerns, um, but it is still something that you might want to still talk with your broker, let them know, and also something to keep in mind too with some of these other extensions that we're going to talk to about as well. Um, it still is going to probably be worth just talking to your broker, just getting a good feel for what they have to uh, say um, with this as far that has come out. But that should take care of a lot of concerns. 
Um, if you look through the uh, the SFAR, um, if you go to page 85 on the public inspection document that you'll find on AOPA's website, um, that will give you further information. So if there's anything in all this conversation too, please be sure you read the actual regulation, just like you would with any other regulation in Part 6191. Please be sure you take the time to uh, read that carefully and make sure you understand how that applies to you. If you have any questions, please be sure you reach out to the Pilot Information Center here at AOPA if you have any further questions. So that's your medical. What about your pilot certificates? Well, as you know, pilot certificates don't expire, so that's not something to where it will directly impact you, but you're certified. For those of you that are flight instructors, you know that your uh, certificate expires every 24 calendar months. Again, the FAA understands that. We know that we don't want to restrict CFIs um, and the economic um, uh, impact of having to uh, allow a CFI certificate to expire um, and then having to retake a practical exam. So the FAA did look at that and analyze that and determined that um, as a result of COVID-19 and the restrictions, right, they are going to essentially allow you until the end of June to um, continue to apply uh, to renew your flight instructor certificate. So in essence, it does allow for an extension through the end of June. So that's great, right? So uh, please look at all the wonderful resources that are out there, right, that you can use to uh, renew your flight instructor certificate. All right. So that was your what's on you, your person, and the sense of what you have to take with you on every flight. Um, let's talk about the logbook, okay, um, and the documentation, things that you need in there. Um, flight reviews and recency experience, okay. So the previous two were pretty easy. They were blanket state, blanket extensions. All right. So this is where it's going to get really confusing, really complex, and unfortunately, it is something that is really difficult to put out in an article to help explain to you what this is. So we hope that, or at least I hope that this will do a good job to at least give you a little bit better idea of the complexities with this and at least give you an idea of whether or not this extension will even apply to you. So first, let's talk about the flight review, right? We know we have to do this every 24 calendar months. So the FAA has allowed for a three calendar month extension, however, under very, very limited conditions, all right? And so there are two big things, um, at least big bullet points. One is you have to meet the applicability requirements of this particular um, extension of the flight review. And we're gonna talk a little bit about in, in the next uh, slide, but just know um, that uh, the operations that you are planning to do, if you use this extension, it's going to be focused on things such as uh, commercial operations or things for uh, in uh, benefit of a personal business, or for volunteer type flights or to move um, essential goods or medical supplies. Because as we talked about at the beginning of my present, uh, part of the presentation was that a lot of what the FAA was building upon with this as far was really looking at what are the ways that general aviation can help fight uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we do see that a little bit in these very restrictive um, requirements, um, but it is something that uh, we are looking at trying to figure out uh, the complexities and hopefully provide a little bit more guidance to you. But do know this is, again, something you want to look at very closely in terms of the requirements. Um, and then in addition, if you meet the applicability requirements, you also have to require uh, other requirements specifically for uh, the flight review. So under part page 73, um, there are going to be things such as you need 10 hours of PIC time within the last 12 calendar months. Um, in an aircraft that you are rated for. You need to at least have three wings credits at the beginning of January uh, of this year. So please look at those very carefully because there are there are some very, very specific requirements with that. Second is the uh, PIC recent flight experience, um, specifically with instrument flight experience. So um, this they have extended to June 30th. Again, very limited conditions, very similar conditions as the flight review. So again, We'll talk about it on the next slide, but you really have to be doing essential type of um, uh, 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 operations that really help benefit either uh, your own personal benefit uh, business um, or uh, moving essential goods or services. So we'll talk about a little bit of where you can find that. Um, and then there are also separate requirements for extensions of the instrument flight currency. So um, you do need to have within the last nine calendar months, the six approaches, uh, holding, intercepting, tracking, uh, but you also have recency, uh, uh, three approaches within the last six calendar months to show you have some real recent um, experience as well to, to be able to take advantage of that extension. So again, 
something to keep in mind, this is very narrow in scope in terms of those limitations. So again, you really need to look at the uh, SBAR in terms of whether or not that applies to you. Um, one thing we do want to note that the PIC landing currency, so three takeoff landings last 90 days, um, that was discussed in the SBAR, but was not um, what, what was not extended. So that is something you do want to keep in mind. Uh, so in the next slide with what's in your logbook, again, we, we look at the extensions only applied really for general aviation pilots of what we're talking about today are the uh, flight review and instrument currency ex um, extensions. As I talked about, there are some really strict restrictions in terms of applicability. All right. So not only need you need you need to do things for um, to get the uh, extension for flight reviews and um, and uh, the instrument currency, but you have to meet specific applicability requirements uh, that you will find in page 70 to 72 of the SFAR, and they're kind of lengthy, and you have to really again read them very closely. So, point of being is that if you choose to extend, if you remember, if you don't have to use the SFAR in this situation, you don't have to worry about this. But if you do need to extend. Um, your flight review or your instrument currency under this SFAR, you have to make sure you follow certain uh, 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 requirements um, under limited conditions. For example, a flight, if you have a commercial pilot certificate, you can do a flight for compensation and hire. That's okay. If you're a private pilot, you can do uh, charitable medical flights for a volunteer pilot organization as long as they have an exemption issued under Part 11. Uh, and then there are also exemptions for if you have a certain amount of time, 500 hours total time, 400 PIC, um, and 50 hours PIC last 12 calendar months, you can do certain things such as um, flight incidental to your business or employment, um, flights that are in support of family medical needs or transport of central goods or personal use. There are a, hand, there are a few others in, uh, in addition to that. So please, please, please take a look at that. So the big concept here is that this isn't a blanket extension. This doesn't mean that you can just go out and fly uh, if you um, if your flight review or your instrument currency has expired or is expiring over these next few months. That is not what this particular SFAR allows. It only allows it under certain circumstances. So please be, please, please, please be sure you look at that SFAR um, to get clarification on whether or not it does apply to you. And again, remember, if, uh, if, if you're current through the rest of uh, June, um, or you have access to an aircraft, you're, you should be fine. You don't need to worry about having to um, get extension off this SFAR. Uh, other things, just keep in mind that may or may not apply to you, but analogous exams, uh, both from a pilot uh, analogous exam, all analogous exams will be extended. If you are a part 107 knowledge, uh, uh, requ recency requirements, the FAA has provided relief for that. There are specific requirements that you need to follow there, so please check that out on page 81. International flights. Uh, you, the SFAR is recognized by the FAA to use that in another country, but please be sure you check out for that other country on whether or not they recognize this SFAR, and please be sure you have it with you and accessible and can bring that upon uh, request. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, there are a lot, again mentioned, there are a lot of other things under Part 21, 6365, 125, 141. If you feel that there's some uh, things under those parts that are applicable to you, please dive into the SFAR. Um, and I, sorry, I'm kind of droning on a lot about the SFAR. There's a lot in it. There's a lot that we want to make sure that you are aware of and how to find that. Um, but uh, in the end, on the last slide here is if you do have questions, um, please be sure to reach out to us here at AOPA. We're going to be updating our web pages with more information for you to uh, find out more about the SFAR. Um, biggest thing is we want to make sure that you are educated about this because we certainly don't want you to go out and operate outside of this um, new regulation that's totally new, something unprecedented that the FAA has never uh, done before, and certainly in a circumstance uh, that we have not seen in modern history. So um, please be sure to reach out, email, go to the website, uh, call if you have any questions um, as we are here to help. So with that, Adam, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you, Chris. Absolutely. Well, everyone take care, fly safe, and uh, until next time, uh, take care.